Hello again everyone, it's me Johnny. I want to thank you for checking out my video and today I want to talk to you about dealing with adversity. I haven't been on uh, YouTube for a while, I haven't, haven't made a video in about a month and a half, maybe a little longer due to the fact I had another accident, another bike accident and I did it to myself. Woohoo! <laughs> Self-imposed adversity. And uh, I, um, real quick, what happened was I was riding my bike, I fell off. Real short story and I happened to fracture my I hope I have this uh, pronunciation right. My femoral condyle bone, which is the bone where the thigh bone is, right around where the knee is, the little hook that goes on there. I fractured it on the outside. And I also tore my PCL ligament, which runs along the back of the knee. And I also uh, grade one sprain, both on the, oh God, what do they call it? Medial and uh, lateral collateral ligaments which run around both sides of the knee. Anyway, I did it to myself and hence the name of the video is Dealing with Adversity. And when I did it to myself and this time dealing with it and this this side of it is that because of everything I went through before I knew exactly what to do. Um, as far as the healing uh, it's more like a hiccup for me. Um, hell of an inconvenience. I mean more frustrated at myself than anything else. I didn't ever want to go through um, going through this, I had to go for uh, more doctor's appointments, x-rays, MRIs, needles, um, all this other stuff. There was a chance I was going to have to go through surgery, depending how bad the fracture was. And um, for me, uh, I had to, you know, deal with it. I, had, I was in a lot of pain. I was in a lot of pain. And the one thing I wanted to do was, uh, like I tell everybody, game changer for me was getting my medical records because that put me in the driver's seat. I didn't know how bad it was. I could have picked up the MRI myself, but I didn't. But I got the written report, and what I did was, the reason I say it's a game changer because it puts you in control. It prepares me, impresses me to actually see what's going on in my body with the injury. Then I can prep myself for my next consultation with my doctor. And I can ask him all the questions that I need to ask about surgery. Was it gonna be this? Was it gonna be that? We really didn't know, but it was so funny because when I got my uh, medical records, I was with another cancer patient that reversed cancer with nutrition. And we both sat down across from each other and we knew exactly what to do. Because both of us been around the bases before. And we knew, you know, go hit Google, start typing in the words you don't understand and to prepare a report, put it in a way that you can read it and then start writing down questions that you can ask your doctor. And it's a game changer because you can start learning about it. When I got that versus when I first got diagnosed with cancer, my first, you know, dealing with adversity was fear. Fear overtook me because I didn't understand it. It's not like I'm, I'm, a, I'm an expert in cancer. I don't focus on cancer. When I got diagnosed, I didn't focus on non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I didn't check on all these other things when I first got diagnosed. I more or less focused on how my body heals. So the, hence, that's why I picked up books like Physiology, Biology, um, some other books that I had on how the body heals, on books on nutrition, you know, plant-based diet for me. Uh, and these are the things that I learned on my road to recovery. So when this happened, you know, it was definitely a hiccup because one thing, when you're dealing with adversity, adversity is really going to test your true character. If you never face adversity, you know, you're never going through nothing in life. You're just sitting there like a, a, a wind or a wave going to and fro, never dealing with the issues that are going on in your life. And I did that for a long time, you know, where I wouldn't challenge myself, I never released the inner champion. But going through a cancer diagnosis taught me how to release the inner champion. How to look, you know, how to live my life, what I say is at the finish line. What I mean by living my life at the finish line is seeing myself finishing the race healthy. Seeing myself crossing that line healthy. So when this popped up, having a fractured knee, and it's scary because depending how bad the fracture was, my, I could not bend my knee. You know, when I went to the hospital and they put me and they bandaged me up and they put everything, as soon as I came home, they gave me some crutches and I was hobbling, threw the crutches away. I just don't, they're in the room somewhere. Never used them. I came off, I went off, and I bought another brace. Um, and I said, we're going to do this. I'm going to do whatever I can to let my body heal because I really didn't want to deal with surgery. And it was at that point I knew I had to up my game. 
on uh, for me because it was more of an inconvenience not being able to go to the gym. And mind you, I trained my mind to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay, if that's what it's going to take for me to reverse cancer and deliver the healthy lifestyle that I want to live, then I'm going to have to make changes in my life, drastic changes in my life. You know, when I was younger, uh, I belonged to an institution where they would make you wake up at around 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning. You're up and you're outside ready to go. So at my age now, why couldn't I do it if it was a learned behavior when I was younger? And sure enough, training my mind, training my body, how to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, to go to the gym. Why? Because the outcome and how much greater I feel after I work out, after I take care of me, the inner workings of me. So when I had this injury, it's a couple months. They said it was going to take four to six months for the type of sprain and injury that I had before I can return or, you know, be walking right. It's been a month and a half maybe, and I'm already walking around without a brace. I'm already walking around. No crutches, no nothing. Hurts a little tender here and there because you forget that it's hurting. But what I did was, you know, I took care of it. I rested on it, essential oils, um, rubbing up with essential oils, uh, juicing, a lot more juicing, more juicing than I usually do, which is a lot. Um, and really taking care of myself, you know, sitting down, letting my body heal because, you know, going back to the doctors all the time because he wanted me to go back for another appointment. is like, what are you going to do? You're not going to heal me. So why are we wasting time? Why am I going to your office for another appointment if I know my body's going to heal by myself? That's my perspective. I'd rather save my money and go invest it into something else because the body's going to heal my body. I knew my body was going to heal this injury. Like I said, it wasn't going to take that long. But the test, of, I think, going through a cancer diagnosis, like I said, this is a hiccup for me. The true test of character is how you perceive it. You know, how you perceive the adversity. What's your perception of adversity? See, you can get a cancer diagnosis and fear is going to set in, which is normal. The shock is going to set in. But how you face it is the game changer. Because you can go in your room, close the curtains, close the blinds, shut the door, crawl under the covers, cry, okay? After you get done with that, after you get out of bed, guess what? You still have to face a diagnosis. You're still going to have to go through it. You know, in my, in my case, it was a chapter of my life but it wasn't the end of my life. It was a defining moment in my life where I really, really had to deal with issues that I never really wanted to deal with before. Never really wanted to face. So cancer for me was a wake-up call. It was a, tap, a divine tap on my shoulder saying, hey, wake up. You know, you're alive, but are you really living the life that you want to live? So going through it and conditioning myself to, you know, wake up in the morning and go, you know, exercise, lift weights, come back in the afternoon and go work out again. Um, for this to happen to me, oh God, it, it, it bothered me. It's more of a bother nuisance than anything. That, and the fact that I did it to myself <laughs> doesn't help much when I think about it. But I'm a lot better off. So when it did happen, I knew exactly what to do. You know, when your number's called adversity, you're going to go through it. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. I didn't want to deal with another doctor bills. I didn't want to deal with, you know, going to this doctor, going to that specialist, going to this. You're just getting bounced around like a little pinata. I didn't want to do that no more. I said, we're not going to do surgery no more? Okay, I'll see you in a couple months. <laughs> and I'm, I'm already, you know, stretching and doing what I have to do little by little. I'm not rushing it. Um, and I, I'm glad that I escaped uh, surgery, really, because I didn't want to go through surgery anymore. I don't want to do it. And there's some stuff coming up in my life that I'm prepping myself up for, so convenience. But what are you going to do when you face adversity comes into your life? You have a choice. Number one, if I can give you some steps um, that I've learned from my perspective or what I did when I got my cancer diagnosis, is number one, you're going to educate yourself. Because right now, the only education you probably have after cancer diagnosis is what conventional medicine has told you. So you have one perception and it's driven by fear. The cancer industry for me um, is driven by fear. It is. And it's a, it's a scary moment. It's a scary diagnosis. And if you're just listening to one side of it, that's your perception of it. Of course you're going to be scared. But when you start educating yourself, and I'm not against chemotherapy or radiation. I'm not against anyone who takes it. Um, I just know in my case it wasn't for me. And uh, dealing with it from the top down is it's like I knew that I would have to go for it. And the number one thing I knew I had to do was educate myself. I had to be a student of the game. You watch these big athletes that like Kobe Bryant and your LeBron James, your Michael Jordans, you name these big athletes, these superstars that uh, go 
you know, they go at it. What do they do? What do they all have in common? They go out and they do the work. They go out and they find a way to win. These guys have spent six or seven hours in the gym. That's what I had to do. You know, they spend so much time working out, how they eat, what they focus on. You have to do the same thing. It's like training for the Olympics. For me, that's the way I envisioned it, you know, going through a cancer diagnosis, is this is my Olympics. You know, at the Olympic Games, I say it in other videos, in the Olympic Games, they don't give away medals for second place at the cancer games. I'm sorry, at the cancer games, they don't give away medals for second place. It's either gonna do it or you're gonna go home. And you have to learn how to heal spirit, soul, and body. And you have to deal with the adversity. And the adversity, the symptom is the cancer diagnosis. The adversity is really dealing with you. That inner working of the song that you've been playing over subconsciously, the way you programmed yourself and settled in life, that's what my story was. It wasn't until I decided to make changes in my life, spirit, soul, and body, about everything, the whole world that I created about myself. Because I was writing the chapter. I was writing the story of my life. And it wasn't until I became alive and became aware of, through a cancer diagnosis that I really started to live. You know, I got a second chance at life. And that's how you're going to have to train yourself is, number one, educate yourself. Educate not on the cancer. You can study it, but I wouldn't. I would educate myself on how the body heals. Get all the information on how the body heals. You have a thing called the immune system. Figure how that thing works. You know, I, I wouldn't call it like um, people call it, oh, um, yeah, he's fighting cancer. No, I'm not fighting cancer. I'm healing from cancer. My body's been healing from cancer all my life. So it's nothing new. This is nothing new but a hiccup and going through it. And like I said, number one is educate yourself. Get a plan together. Okay, visualize the plan. Live it. Learn to live at the finish line. How do you see yourself? What's the outcome that you see? Because visualization is very powerful. The good book says write the vision down. Write it down. Third thing I would do is build a healing team. A healing team consists of an oncologist, uh, a naturopath doctor, and people that will be brutally honest with you. You know, when it's time to, hey, you might need to get chemo, hey, which is IPT, look it up online. But uh, low dose chemotherapy, which is like, I'm really into that, I'm really looking into that. But these are things I would get books on physiology, biology. You know, I'll go online and look, one of my favorite doctors right now is Dr. William Lee. Um, on angiogenesis and foods that create angiogenesis uh, stem cells that kill cancer cells. Mind-blowing. His work is like, like mind-blowing and you can watch him. He's on TED Talks. And uh, yeah, these are some of the things. So me going through this, for me, like I said, it's a hiccup because I've already been around the bases. I'm a veteran around the bases. You know, I know. I know my way through the medical system. I know that my body's going to heal if I give it what it wants. And right now it just needs a little rest, a little downtime and uh, plenty of nutrients that'll help my body heal and help me grow. And then the outcome of this is what am I learning from this? <laughs> it's growth. <laughs> and, uh, I was gonna make a joke, but I'll keep it to myself. Um, it's not to fall off your bike, idiot. Don't do it again. Um, basically, I just did it to myself and I kick myself every time I think about it. So it's like, dang. And this one cost me because it cost me um, my goals of how I live my life. And I'm back, and I'm making some more videos. And um, thanks for checking out my video. God bless you. Love you. And remember, your true healing, I believe, is spirit, soul, and body. You're alive, but are you living the life that you want to live? God bless and take care.